Look, helping your business to stay afloat can be a tricky task. You won't have to cut out so much on your expenses and still maintain top quality products and services. If you're having problems solving this issue, here's some tips to cut costs while maintaining quality. When everything is just more expensive in today's economy, the first thing you wanna do to help your business keep afloat is cut off expenses. I'm a firm believer in cutting off business expenses rather than cutting jobs. But maybe this is the first time it's ever happened to you and now you don't know where to begin and don't worry, I'll help you through that. Here are some tips on how you could cut expenses from your business and end up saving it. My name is Munif Ali and I became a self-made millionaire in my early 20s and I've built multiple brick and mortar businesses with billions of dollars in sales. I started making videos to share my life experience and to teach others on how to become successful in life and in business. If you like the type of content I'm giving you, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and like the video and share it with people who you think might find this video useful. Okay, so first thing first, check your miscellaneous and supply expenses as these are the easy ones to go unnoticed. With that, you'll be able to find any unnecessary extra supplies that are within the company which you can cut off right now. One of the worst things you can have is like Amazon subscribe or something and you've got a ton of the same supply in your storage or closet or whatever, you could cut back on that. To help you manage your supply costs, you can look for different vendors and try to get cheaper options that offer you basically the same thing, or you could try to renegotiate with your supplier. Advise your current vendor or supplier that you found cheaper prices elsewhere. And they often will give you a better deal or discount once they find out that you went to a competitor or are looking at a competitor. You might also try to shop in large discount suppliers as well. And sometimes you get a better deal in discounts if you buy bundles or in bulk. I know of a company that shares some supplies with a company next door. It's a very cool opportunity when small businesses are collaborating like that. And sometimes, who knows, you can end up not only saving hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in the long run, but making some relationships along the way. Going back to subscribing from a service like Amazon or Walmart, if you're always routinely using that one supply, then by all means, go ahead and do that because you're always going to get a cheaper cost when something is subscribed to. Maybe you have some kind of a manufacturing business or you make products. It might be time to cut some of your production costs. Check to see if you have extra unused material, but instead of sending them to the recycling center, try selling them instead. Now, not only will you not waste the material that's been sitting around, but you'll actually bring in some revenue for your business. For example, if you had an office that got hit by the pandemic and you've got a whole bunch of extra furniture laying around with nobody using it, maybe it's time for you to clear up some space by liquidating some of the things that you're no longer using. Other typical expenditures that you may have also overlooked could be miscellaneous expenses. These could be simple things like equipment costs, such as computers that are too expensive for the type of office and what you're using it for. I often find that with computer equipment, people want the latest and the greatest, but they may not always need that in their business practices. Or you have an oversupply in your closet with coffee and sugar, but nobody's coming into the office. So you really need to study the patterns of what's going on in your particular business. Let's say you have a big office like I do with very little people coming in. You might think about you renting out that extra space to another business or a person that might want it. And if you know the concept of WeWork, maybe you can start to get portions of your large office and rent it out to individuals or even other companies. You might not need as much space as you did before the pandemic. I know some people have large warehouses. Well, try to restructure your business and use the large amounts of space, especially if you're locked into a lease or you, if you can't sell and own the building. Think of creative ways to bring in more revenue. Let's look at the tracking and measuring of your operational efficiency in your business. This will help you increase your production as well as decrease your production expenses by helping you make a proper adjustment to improve your business efficiency and maximize on the resources you already have. You can do this by setting performance parameters that will reflect your business goals. And remember always to offer incentive when business goals are met. So what I mean by that is you notice that you have a juicing bar and a whole ton of fruit goes bad. You might have to cut down some things so that you can start to bring in more revenue. It's just simple little things like that 
can mean all the difference in the world on you keeping your doors open. So insurance policies might be outdated and too expensive and you could have duplicate coverage. So make sure you check competitors as far as insurance policies are concerned to see you might be able to get better insurance for your employees at a cheaper cost. Make sure you try to also consolidate your insurance policies so you don't have over coverage in one area and see what it is that everybody really needs. You can save thousands like this just by paying attention to little things. Check your marketing and advertising processes. If you're still using old advertising means like paper, print, bus bench ads, or commercials, it might be the time for you to convert over to more modern marketing approaches such as social media marketing and email marketing. Nowadays, it's much more efficient and effective to use email referral programs from your customers to grow your brand. Referrals tend to be more personal and you have a more loyal customer base that will vouch for you and your business can start to grow in those arenas. In this digital age, it's best to network more and more and advertise less and less. Not only will it cut your costs, but it'll give you a fresher approach to your marketing strategy. For example, in real estate, a lot of people take bus bench ads and all people do is draw mustaches, color in teeth, or put their backside on your face while they're waiting for the bus. It's old, it's stagnant advertising, and no one ever stops their car all of a sudden just to take down some realtor's number because they like the way their sign looks. It is something that people still do, but if they were to take that money and apply it online, it would have a much better rate of return. Look, time is gold for everyone, that includes businesses. If you notice that your employees may not be working as efficiently, aka slacking, it's probably time to use apps like Rescue Time, Toggle, or even Trello to help them focus their tasks and get the most out of their day. Now, when everybody was used to working at home, it was a different feel. Now you can start to use these apps and see how your employees are working more effectively and start to structure hours that make sense cutting out inefficiencies in the long run. Remember to schedule business meetings and encourage them to adhere to the company's daily and weekly schedules. This also is a great way to help you stay connected with your team and employees, especially since most work is done online today anyway. Always remind them that the business is a collaborative work experience and that everyone needs to bring their A game to maximize potential profit so they can end up keeping and saving their jobs. Now, speaking of working online, one of the most effective ways to save money nowadays is working online. Virtual meetings help you and your employees cut costs by minimizing travel expenses, food and beverage expenses, even time usage. I recently went out to a whole luncheon and we could have probably done the meeting completely online and have been more efficient on time. So just think about all of that. And there are so many different apps to help people work online. Google Docs, Google Sheets, Basecamp, Zoom. Now is the best time to harness the power of virtual technology. You can easily collaborate with someone across the globe these days. So embrace the virtual technology to prove and lessen the expense of your business. You might not need 5,000 square foot. Maybe you could do with three. Maybe you don't need a lease at all. So remember, it's about saving your business and growing your business. And a closed business doesn't help any employee in the long run. Just to take a break. Here's exciting news for you. I just came up with a free ebook and I'm giving you tons of value, especially if you're a millennial. It gives you everything you need to become more financially aware and more financially savvy. So go ahead and click the link down below and get your free copy. Before I tell you the last one, if you like this type of content, go ahead and apply a little bit of liberal pressure on that like and subscribe button and let me and the algorithm know that this video is valuable to you and I'll continue to make more videos like this each and every week. And also make sure that you turn on that notification bell so that when I come out with a new video, you're informed. I always look at secondary skills that an employee has and other skills and I jot that down, I write it down, we even have a spreadsheet about other things that they're capable of doing so that we can always continue to keep someone busy rather than having to cut them later because I just don't have enough revenue coming into the business. If you're the leader of a business, it's your job to make sure that everybody is employed within that business. And if you really need to hire people or do a one-time project, then hire a freelancer rather than a full-time employee. This will save you more money and it won't cause an issue later after the project is done and you can quickly go ahead and stop working with that particular virtual person. It's always a little bit of a hit when an employee loses their job or you're cutting a position based on morale and other things. So those are 
several of my tips to help you manage your business. I hope that you can apply these to your business, especially since it's getting harder for businesses to continue operations in today's economy. And just remember, what's important is your quality of service or so that your product line doesn't decline just because your business is not doing as well. Always remember to ask your customers if they're satisfied, even if that means you have to make changes. And if you have any other ideas on how to cut expenses, please go ahead and comment down below. I'd really like to hear from you. And remember to follow my Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter, and get more valuable information for your future investments. And if you want to learn more about business, make sure you check out this video, how to start a business from scratch.